the fighter look when you see the confidence start to drain away? Their eyes, their body, um, their legs, everything, everything just completely slows down. Um, the eyes especially, um, you see them running away, you see, you just see uh, just a change of action. They came into the fight thinking that, knowing that they were going to win, uh, but in reality I knew what I, that I was going to take everything out of them. Mm. Um, and during the fight, seeing that confidence um, slowly diminishing, um, that's, that's what I live for. Well, um, before I turn it over to Big J, and then I have to let you know we're going to be listening to an interview that was done at the beginning of April from Michael Zarafa. Uh, Tim Zhu has a face-off that's happening tonight at, well, actually, what time is it right now over there, Big J, real quick? Uh, it's uh, 5.40 in the morning Australian Eastern Standard Time, uh, Thursday, May the 6th. Okay, and so basically the- in about 12, it, well, it's Thursday, so this episode happened last night. Uh, it says yeah, Wednesday, 7.30 p.m. your time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that, that was last night. And in approximately four hours and 20 minutes, Tim Zhu has his announcement for his next fight. Okay, so let's jump right into it. So Tim Zhu has an announcement for his next fight. And somebody else is supposed to be having an announcement for their next fight. Big J? That is correct. Yeah, well, we saw on... I saw on uh, Facebook last night that Tim Zhu's got an uh, announcement for his next fight. I thought, he's never had an announcement for one of his fights. That's interesting. Mm-hmm. And then I see on other media that Michael Zarafa has an announcement for his next fight at the same time. So let me tell you about the fighters. Um, 18 and over 14 kills, Tim Zhu. Um, they even updated on his box rec. It now says the soul taker. Uh, Michael Zarafa, 28-4. And, oh, oh, 28 and 4 with uh, 17 KOs. Most notable fights against Anthony Mundine. That was in March of this year. Two fights with Jeff Horn. Both wars. One he won. One he lost. Um, Kel Brook. Many thought that you know he should have won that fight. And I believe I was one of those people. And then of course years back. 2015 he got knocked out in five rounds. By uh, uh, Kid Chocolate uh, Peter Quillen. But now. I'm going to tell you right now. I'm one of those guys that is a very, very uh, big fan of Australian boxing, and obviously we cover Australian boxing. And I believe, before we go ahead and listen to Mick Zarafa, and we'll talk for a few minutes, I believe that if the fight is to happen, it will be Mick Zarafa is going to be victorious. So what are the details so far? You know, you heard, you're hearing that it's not official yet, yet both fighters have um, separate announcements coming up in about, what, four hours or so, maybe less. So, uh, 10 o'clock in the morning. Yep, yep, yep. I'm hearing that uh, July 7th in Newcastle is a possible um, venue for the fight. Um, how many uh, does that it hold? Also, uh, so, uh, so, yeah, I'm thinking for a fight of that caliber, why wouldn't they take it to a stadium? But then again, it's smack bang in the middle of football season. So, mm. yeah, I can understand why. So, yeah, I think. I put I put this fight like this. This is the fight Australia wants, but this mm-hmm. is not the fight Australia needs right now. This is too soon for this. I think they're rushing it, just like they rushed Horn v Zoo. But uh-huh. yeah, I personally, for me, I don't want to see this fight at this stage. I think it's too early, and there's really no significance bar bragging rights because they're not on the same. They're not on the same weight. That. They're both, you know, mix a middle ranked and middleweight. Tim Zhu's a half a st- two steps away from a world title shot. I think this is bad timing. This is just me personally, but it's it's been brewing for what two years now. Yeah, so, I I personally two, yeah. I like the I mean I like the fight. I like what Tim Zhu's doing, cleaning out um cleaning out his domestic opponents, even though he you know he couldn't get to uh, Anthony Mundine, but yet, you know, Mick Zarafa got to him. Uh, But what we're going to do is we're going to take a jump cut, and we're actually going to listen to what Mick Zarafa had to say because he had a chance, uh, Big J had a chance to talk to him about a month or so ago when we actually both thought, you know, that the fight wasn't going to happen. We're going to talk about how that came about. So take your time out. Please like the video. Subscribe. This is T-Street Controversy with FightView360.com.
Big J, Jason Fletcher. And again, we're talking, we've got the privilege of talking to uh, Mick, pretty boy, Sarafa. Mick, you're becoming a bit of a regular on the show, mate. Get your punch card. Your 10th interview comes with a free cup of coffee. <laughs> mate, you're a champion. It's, uh, it's a privilege to be on your... Uh... On, your, on the radio or on the podcast and, and getting my point across. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I still owe you that piece of caramel mud cake too. I'm working on that, so I'm a man of my word. I'll find a way to get it to you. I'll hold you to that, mate. I'm, I'm waiting. Yeah, so you, should, so you should. So you should. But, um, mate, let's get right into it. First of all, the mundane fight. You looked impressive. You looked good. We all know Chuck was past his best, but um, you actually looked really, really sharp and clean in the fight. What were your thoughts on it? Yeah, look, you know, I did everything right. Uh, you know, uh, every fighter says, every fight camp's the best I've ever had. But just, for me, it was more, I had a lot of things that I probably didn't go my way or I've had better in previous camps. But just mentally, for me, it was just another level. I think I've really matured now. Um, you know, I'm 29 years old. I'm a man, um, you know, and I just, you know, I had to get the win. It was a must win for me. And anyone that was standing in front of me that night would have been, you would have had to have killed me to beat me. And um, like I said, we got the win nice and early. We got to install and... Um, yeah, now moving on to bigger and better things. And to your credit, you did it in a way where you didn't um, go out and hurt Chuck. You did what needed to be done. And I've seen the video clips, the respect afterwards. I mean, that's a touching thing. That's what that's what we want in sport. And um, are you sort of, in a way, happy that you were the man that finally put Chuck to bed? Well, look, you know, there was a, there was a long legacy. You know, Bit of sweet? Yeah, you know, of course. You know, I, I reached out to him when I was 13 years old as a kid and told him one day, I uh, will fight him and retire him, and you know, he replied saying, you know, if you're looking to be beat, I'm the man to meet, and I left him on scene, and obviously 15 years later, I got that opportunity, and I, I knocked him out, and, and you know, lived up to my word, and, and stuck to my, my game plan, and and like I said, it was a, a great moment to share with, you know, a three-time world champion, a legend in the sport afterwards, it was, you know, a bit emotional and a bit, um, you know, sad, but it was, it was, it was a good feeling, like I said, you know, it, it was, it was an amazing um, journey that I got to be a part of, and and to witness along, you know, watching him do his thing. Mm, mm. And the undercard had Shannon, um, Shannon O'Connell versus Sneaker Johnson. That was an actual, a very credible fight. I really enjoyed it. I thought the girls put on a fantastic show. Uh, yeah, was, was, did you watch, have you seen the tape? Yeah, yeah, well, there was a TV in, the, in my change room, so when I was getting my warm-up and stuff like that, I was watching it. And, um, yeah, no, it was, it, was a, it was a cracker. Yeah, it was. Could have gone, could, gone either way. It was so close, so close. I didn't. I gave it to Shannon by one point. I mean, those cards. I think they gave her two or three point advantage. I'm like, it, it was a lot closer than that. Yeah, it could have gone either way, you know. Yeah. Like I said, it, and it was a credit to both girls. They went out there and put on an absolute war for the five fans. And um, you know, Shannon O'Connor, credit to her and her team. She got the decision, but uh, could have gone either way. Yeah, it was. I think a, re I think a rematch is uh, in in talks, maybe. Yeah, I, I think that uh, there has been talks about a rematch, and uh, you know, this week, next weekend, um, actually this weekend, uh, Ebony Bridges is going for her um, WBA title in the UK. So the ladies are uh, stepping up, which is fantastic. Um, Taking over, one hundred percent. Yeah, exactly. Watch out, Mick. They might be more popular than you soon. So <laughs> that's a big call, mate. Nah. <laughs> uh, well, he's leading. He's leading the way at the moment. Big pun. I said the rapper's leading the way at the moment. Oh, yeah, well, yeah, definitely. No doubt, mate. No doubt, no doubt. But, you know, the people are nipping at your heels, son. So, you know, anyway. So we'll get, we'll move into it now. Obviously, we've got to talk about the million-dollar deal. It's been put on the table. Um, your uh, big, big-time boxing has put the million dollars on it. Uh, you broke it down last night, but let's just, for our fans, we'll break it down because we, we want to get our story straight. So it's a million dollars on the table with a 60-40 split, or is it an additional million with a 60-40 split for the purse? Yeah, look, it's just a, a million-dollar mega fight. Um, you know, there's a huge lump sum of money in there, um, and obviously my team's put up a million, and their team's going to put up whatever they're going to put up, and uh, obviously when we come down to negotiations, well, it's looking like a 60-40 split. Um, but again, I'll just, I'll just focus on training and let my team do that. But, um, you know, we... We will run that fight, you know, like, if he, had a, if he had a world title fight that was, you know, in paper and, you know, it was going to happen, there was a date set, man, I'd be the first to say, Timmy, bring it home with, with both both hands, but, you know, I want the public to realise that he doesn't have that opportunity, you know what I mean? So, there's, there's a reason why, and, you know, that's why we put up the offer, that's why we've made it more clear that we want this fight. Um, so I don't know what his excuse is now. Mm. Yeah, that's right. Because we were looking over on the weekend, we're like, because um, we've we've seen uh, the lead up to the um, uh, Zoo Hogan fight that Tim pretty much is like, yep, 
uh, wasn't really interested in it, but this 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 might change um, away. This might change his mind. But um, you've got other things in the pipeline. If that doesn't go, uh, word is you're going back. You're looking back to go overseas. If this doesn't come, this doesn't come uh, come to fruition. One hundred percent. Yeah. All right, so we're back. So now the question is, um, Mick Zarafa's team has put up a million dollars, and it seems as though Tim Zoo's team has put has took the bait. Now, what was interesting is how much did Tim Zoo's team put up? Do we think that they matched the one hundred the the one million dollars, and also the sixty forty split in whose favor? Uh, Big J, what do you think is going on there? Oh, 60 40 split is definitely in Tim Zoo's favor. Mick actually stated that to me. When wow, we were so talking, he's, he so. really wants to fight. But he didn't, mm, that, mm, yeah. yeah. His team's putting up a million, and he, like, okay, all right, we're even giving you the 60%. That's smart. Yep, yep. Yeah, yeah. 60% is in favor of Tim Zoo. I'm pretty sure that's what he said. But yeah, that, that has been, um, I think that's been reported more than once that it's in Tim Zoo's favor. So, okay. which, which, which is fair enough. But Mick still gets 400 grand. That's something to sneeze at. So. Now, looking at it, uh, Mick Zarafa hasn't been to 154 pounds since December of 2018. We're now in May of 2021. You know, he's been campaigning at 160 pounds, both middleweight. Both uh, Jeff Horn fights was at 160 pounds. The Mundine fight was at 160 pounds. He had a fight after Kelber against a Les Sherrington. That was at 168, really, uh, because Sherrington weighed in at 172. Um... Uh, it was at light heavyweight, but Mixer Rafa waited at 166. You know, very dangerous fight for Tim Zhu. And Tim Zhu, 18 and over 14 KOs, looking at it, the highest he's ever weighed right now looks to be uh, 161 and a half pounds against a Christopher Khan back in July of 2017. So clearly, we would, you know, it's safe to say that, that Mixer Rafa is the bigger fighter. Or, or, you know, who, who do you think is the bigger fighter? Like, you know, weight-wise, who will be bigger uh, in the ring? Uh, probably most probably most likely they'll be about the same because Mick uh, walks around at 75 kilos. Okay. He, he doesn't he doesn't drop much weight when he fights because he wants to he, – he's told me that he wants to stay okay. – you know, that he can drop to 160 without any dramas. He can drop to one. 54 without any drums. That's why he, he hovers around that 75 kilo range or whatever. What's that? 166. Mm -hmm. Like his walk around weight's 166. So he doesn't, it's not like he drops 20 pounds to get okay. there. He, he constantly floats around that. He constantly floats around that, uh, that weight. So, but obviously, you know, a middle weight's a lot bigger than a super welter weight. Um, yeah, but this, 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 this fight, uh, yeah, I mean, yeah, it's a, it's a good fight, but. Is this something unsettling? I don't like about it. What right? is? I mean, I mean, what is? I mean, I like the fight. Look, looking at what Tim Zhu's trying to accomplish, you know, um, um, defeating his domestic rivals. You know, we would love, you know, for that to happen over in the United States. It has to be respected. Now, from a business, you know, and promotional standpoint, you know, Mix and Rafa is a very dangerous fighter, especially when Tim Zhu is so close to a 154 pound title shot. Yeah, this 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 is what this is what I can't seem to understand why he's doing this fight now because he's risk Tim's is risking a lot where Mick's not re really risking anything. Yeah. So, I mean, you know, Tim's is risking his title shot and you know, ri risking you know his uh, uh, undefeated uh, streak. You know, Tim's putting everything on the line here. And then Mick's he would have to go like, back. You know, he would have to rebuild and get that spot back. You know, even if they do have an immediate rematch, still nonetheless he would lose. You know, his title shot spot. You know, a lot of fans, especially hey. reading some comments, feel that um, um, they, they're not ready for Tim Zhu to go overseas yet or domestic or fight, you know, international fighters. Tim Zhu should have fought international fighters three fights ago. If he wants to win a world title, he's not going to do it by beating Australian talent because on, on the 154 level, there really isn't any. He, he should have fought overseas three fights ago. Now, instead of fighting the. Bogan, Bowen Morgans and the Jack Brubakers, he should have went overseas. So I mean, right now, I, I the, think they're avoiding it personally. I mean, so. the, you know, and you know, I've been seeing some comments. Fans, fans do feel that way. I mean, you got Jeff Horn. You know, you know, Jeff Horn. You know, was battle tested. You know, not you know who he yeah, used to be. Yeah, uh, yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, we all thought Jeff Horn would get him out of there in six, but to Tim's credit, he beat the shit out of yeah. old Jeff. And you know the 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 the. the 
Bowen Morgan, as you always to call him, the blown up welterweight? Yeah, well, yeah, exactly. I mean, you know, well, what, that was a. I understand, you know, COVID, keep active, fight, but surely he could have found somebody else. And then I mean, you, you have know, uh, Dennis Hogan, who should have been a former world champion, you know, seasoned fighter in age and coming off of a long layoff. Yeah, but still very credible opponent. You can't, you can't really, you can't fault Tim for doing that. So, uh, but again, I mean, there's what. 60 spots in the um, uh, 154 rankings, you know, for yeah. for uh, sanctioning bodies, 15 spots each. Mm-hmm. Tim Zhu hasn't fought any of those guys. I mean, he's no. ranked number one at WBO, and yet he has not fought one top, I don't even think top 10 current ranked opponent in the WBO. As we talked about, so what, it's going to be interesting to see what the WBO does with this fight and also with Liam Smith taking on um, uh, Michael Dumed uh, Karbanov on ESPN Plus here in the States. Liam Smith is ranked number two by the WBO and Michael uh, Med uh, Karbanov, Karbanov, he is ranked number five. So you would think that the winner of Tim Zhu and Mick Zarafa and the winner of um, Smith versus uh, Michael Dumed, you that they would fight you know, each other to be the mandatory for for the winner of Castaño versus Charlo. But you have that to go back and look yeah. and think like, well, why would Liam, I mean, why would Tim Zhu put himself in a situation? Yeah, but, you well, know, I, I mean, I, if I he wins. I can't figure out how the WBO has allowed him to be the number one contender considering he hasn't fought anybody in those rankings. Yeah, I well, can't figure that out. Well, do you really want to, do you really want to talk about it? We've been doing a real good job not mentioning it. It's because he's Costa Zhu's son. You know? Nah, really? I, I, yeah, I never yeah, that's, that's, how, never yeah that's, how these, that's how these sanctioning bodies work. But Kostya never was never a WBA but, champ. But that's how. But the name though still carry weight. You know, they're oh, all never, about the I, sanctioning fee. That never, that never crossed my mind for a million years. Just like I never would have thought I, that. I'm, I'm shocked because just like you know, the WBC is with Mexican fighters and Canelo and bending over backwards for him. You know, Tim Zhu, like you know, he's got that name. You know, like so. Yes. Yeah. You really? I, I don't. Yeah. I'm not yeah. That. You yeah. Uh, okay. Well, I disagree, but okay. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Like you uh, know, to me, it's like clear as day because he ain't been fighting nobody. Well, you that's know? exactly right. I mean, yeah. I mean, the IBF wouldn't. But the, the, what's, he, what's he ranked in the IBF? Like he's seven, number three. Seven? He's number three. Well, even then, he still hasn't fought anybody there. Like, what's going on there? But his name is uh, Tim. Zoo, but once again, we've been doing a good job. You know, he's just Tim Zoo to us. He's not the son of, you know, he's Tim Zoo. Yeah, he is Tim Zoo, but okay, yep. Yeah, uh, okay. Uh, no, I, that never would have crossed my mind. To be yeah, honest. yeah. Never would have crossed my yeah, mind. Because we don't, no, we don't never. talk about it. You know, so. Yeah. Uh, uh, well, just, we'll, we'll leave that as is. But, yeah, I mean, so, I mean, for, for an Australian fight, this is massive. This is huge. This is what the public are being calling for. So mm-hmm. everyone's going to be extremely happy that this is going to ha- happen. Mm-hmm. Let's not. Let's not dick around and say it's a shit fight because it's not. It's a great no, fight. No, it's not. It's a great it's fight. Fucking oath it is. It's a fantastic fight. And I hope those two really go into the trenches and have a 12-round war. I I, I don't want to... Yeah, I hope it goes, you know, goes at this or very close to the end. I, I think it's going to be fantastic because you'd have to give the advantage to Tim, of course, because he'd be more active than Mick. I mean, Mick's had a, what, a 14-month layoff, that two-minute thing with uh, with Mundine's not going to get that ring rust yeah. off. So, um, yeah, but you know, I mean, Mick, Mick will, Mick is not just going to stand there and let Tim Zoo beat the shit out of him. He's going to, yeah, if he's going to hit him, Mick's going to hit him straight back. So, yeah, yeah it's it's going to be a phenomenal, fantastic fight. I can't wait for it. Well, we'll see what happens. And this announcement's coming up in about four hours. So, yeah, yeah. we will. Well, then there's no more to say than that. Then outside of um, uh, we'll see what the announcement. You know, prediction. Who, who do you want to win? Who do you want to win? Honestly, who I want to win is Tim Zhu, but I think Mixer Raff is going to win. Fair enough. Fair enough. Fair you know, I'm the other way around. I, I, I want, I want, um, I want uh, Mick to win, but I see, uh, there's something about it. It's just you know that um, Tim's gonna, Tim's gonna get there. Uh, Tim's got the, Tim's clearly got the advantage because he's been more active. Yeah. All right, guys. This yeah. is T Street Controversy and Big J with FightView360.com. Please like the video and subscribe.